Working in an auction house, you see all types of things going through the galleries, things that you never thought that you'd see before, things that you didn't even know could be sold or existed. But a lot of those things fall into neat categories. It's impressionist art, it's contemporary art, it's oceanic art, it's a watch, it's jewels. And there are so many exciting things that didn't fall into a category that I knew were important, that I knew were valuable, that had amazing stories behind them, but there was nowhere to put them. So I created a new department to be able to do that. Hi, my name is Cassandra Hatton, and I'd like to introduce you to Sotheby's newest department, Science and Popular Culture. This is a department that I created to enable me to sell all of the things that I love. I love spacesuits, I love moon rocks, anything from 17th century manuscript by Galileo to fossils, meteorites. Sotheby's is a place that's known more for selling Basquiat or Monet. But to me, these types of items perfectly fit in a place like this. Enough about the department. Let's go take a look at what I've been working on for the last several months. Here I'm surrounded by several different types of items ranging from bongo drums to a Nobel Prize to manuscripts to this bust of Leonardo da Vinci. This belonged to Andy Warhol. It was in the factory. It was an incredible inspiration for him. He did a Polaroid series that featured this bust. We really don't know who created it. We do know that it came out of Italy and it looks to be 18th century in style. It's this larger than life piece, much like Da Vinci was, much like Warhol was. Da Vinci was an incredible inspiration to many artists. His work was based on the fundamentals of science. And you can see in the work of Da Vinci that fusion of science and art and creativity. This is exactly the type of item that I love that creates that Venn diagram where you're overlapping science and art. These are the bongo drums that belong to my favorite scientist and a personal inspiration to me, Richard Feynman. Feynman won the Nobel Prize in Physics in the late 60s for his work on quantum electrodynamics. Don't ask me to explain that to you. Very few people even know what that is. This is a uh, first edition of his most famous work. Feynman never wrote a book in the conventional sense. This is a collection of stories that he told to his buddy Ralph Layton, who played the bongos with him. And this copy is the signed first edition. When he was 25, he was recruited to go to Los Alamos and help develop the atom bomb. He had just freshly finished his PhD, married his high school sweetheart, Arlene, who was dying before he moved down to Los Alamos. This is a love letter that he wrote to his wife 18 months after she died. It is the most powerful love letter that I know of. It's very famous. Contrasting it with these, these are some other physics and mathematical manuscripts that Feynman wrote to see the brilliance reflected in this work contrasted with who he was as a human and, and having things like this that really help us understand who he was and what he went through. He was also an artist and this is a gorgeous painting. I wish I knew who she was, a mystery woman painted by Richard Feynman. He painted under the pseudonym of Ophi. He loved to paint. He loved to, to play the drums. He loved to crack jokes. He was just a human and just a massive inspiration. This is exactly the kind of item that I love to see. This is a one-off, handmade model of 150 different human eyes. This was handmade for an eye surgeon in the 19th century in Barcelona. Barcelona was the world capital for eye surgery at the time. And each eye depicts a different ailment, disease, deformity. This one looks like it's got a worm coming out. We've got some scalpels and needles going in, syphilitic eyes. And, you know, looking up close, some of them are just disgusting. But if you take a step back, this is an incredible piece of art. And these are the kinds of things that I love where you're constructing this Venn diagram of really great scientific technical pieces that can also be independently admired for their aesthetic qualities. This is the skull of the famous Triceratops. 
The Triceratops was a four-legged dinosaur that lived during the Cretaceous period, which was about 66 to 154 million years ago. It's enormous. It is at the upper limits of the size for this species, which tells us that it died of old age. What's really incredible about this skull is that when it was dug up, it was in one piece. 80% of this bone mass is original. When you go to a museum, normally what you're going to see is either a no original bone or partial original bone. To have something that's this complete is incredibly rare. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure sharing some of my favorite items with you. And if you can, come see them in person. We're going to have an exhibition in a few weeks and I'd be more than happy to take you around and show these items in person.